Hi, my name is Emily. I'm here with Eric at our annual conference, ICE. Uh, we appreciate our friends over at RTI. We appreciate your support of the HTM community with special trade-in programs and training. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, my name is um, Eric Wickstrom. I'm um, the training manager at RTI. I'm based in our global headquarters in Sweden. Joining colleagues here in the U.S. who uh, work out of an office in New Jersey where we've got uh, both the, the sales office, service center, as well as uh, calibration, um, a calibration lab for all the equipment that we have here. Wow, so quite the trip. <laughs> it is, yes. Yes. <laughs> Can you share some highlights of RTI's X-ray test solutions for CT, MAMO, RADF, and even dental? Yeah, sure. Well, what we, we've got a range of products, and what I'd like to start with and just uh, is have a look at the, the, the first one, the flagship, which is the Piranha. Uh, the Piranha is a multi, um, multi-modality instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, this one I'm showing is a Piranha Multi. It does everything from uh, MAMO, RF, CT, dental, um, all in the, one, uh, in the one unit. Wow. Um, the... Uh, what do you call it? The um, detector area is this uh -huh. white area here. And from there, you can get uh, uh, KV, dose, mm -hmm. time, total filtration, and HVL all in the one shot. Wow. Technology is amazing. It's so compact, but it does all that. It is quite compact. Yeah. Uh, and, it's, uh, and it does a decent job as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, as you see, you have a blue light here. Mm -hmm. That indicates that uh, it's Bluetooth ready. So oh. most of our customers use that Bluetooth connection instead of running wires back into the control room and wow. to their, their, their console where they actually do their, their testing. Uh, if, you, if you do like, if there are um, difficult conditions, there is a possibility of running a USB cable as well uh -huh. uh, from this port right there. Wow. So you have the two options, but uh, the Bluetooth option is the one, the, the most popular. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, this is the base unit. So we, can, we put this in the beam, in the X-ray beam, and we pick up those, the, the KV, the dose, uh, total filtration and all that. Uh, for certain applications, we have an extra port right there, which connects different probes. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a collection of probes. We have an external dose probe, looks like this. It's 10 by 10 square millimeters. Mm -hmm. So it's also quite sensitive, 100 square, centimeter, square wow. millimeters. Mm -hmm. um, we have a smaller one, which is useful in, in uh, fluoro situations where you have a small footprint to measure the dose mm -hmm. so you don't affect the, the AEC too much. There's a carbon fiber uh, rod to allow it to move it around and position it in a good position. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, quite uh, popular as well. For other modalities, CT for instance, of course we do have a CTD, CTDI ion chamber. Looks like this, it's a standard mm -hmm. size, 100 millimeter, that fits into a standard Phantom. Uh, it's powered, gets its bias voltage with, uh, by a chamber adapter. Wow. So it connects to the chamber adapter to get the bias voltage uh, and the chamber adapter connects back into the prana like so. Okay. So it would fit on the CT couch. This would be in the Phantom. Mm -hmm. This would be on the couch. This would be on the couch. And there would be a Bluetooth connection over to your laptop. That makes a lot of sense. In the, in the console. Wow. And so continuing with CT, we've got a CT dose profiler. Looks like this. Looks like a, a pencil ion chamber, but it's actually solid state. Okay. So it has a built-in um, point dose detector right mm -hmm. here. Uh, that uh, actually then it's 0 0.25 millimeters uh, long. So that makes it a point dose detector. The, the idea is there that if you move it through the beam at a known speed mm -hmm. and you know the sampling rate, we can recreate the dose profile. Okay. So thereby getting the, the beam width with an accuracy and a reprodu reproducibility of down to fractions of a millimeter. Wow. That's uh, kind of interesting. It's incredible. So it makes it with one scan, you get the beam width, the full width, half maximum, uh, very accurately. Absolutely. You can also use it in a phantom mm -hmm. uh, center hole, make one exposure, uh, because with, we've collected uh, empirical data if that gives us the ratio between the dose in the center hole and the peripheral holes of the phantom mm -hmm. so that we by measuring it in one position we can then calculate all the ctdi weighted in uh, in one exposure wow so that uh, makes for quite a lot of time saving yeah <laughs> instead of making five minimum five usually you'll have some triggering issues so you may need to do some more 
Uh, but uh, with the C2 dose profile, you do one and you're good to go. Yeah, and time saving is so important. <laughs> it is too. Mm -hmm. And accuracy and reproducibility also. Exactly. That's, that's becoming more and more important, uh, what we have understood. And then moving on, we've got some other stuff. We've got a, a light probe for measuring the, the uh, monitor light. Mm -hmm. uh, it also converts into an ambient light uh, meter. Uh, the very same, same principle there. This mm -hmm. goes into the piranha, and that measurement goes back Bluetooth to wherever you are with your with your laptop. Wow! For ma mass MAS measurements, we've got an invasive, like everybody else, where these cables go into the generator, mm -hmm. where you pull out the, uh, the jumper uh, in the generator. There's a cable here that connects to the piranha. Mm -hmm. So you get the MA and all the, the KB, the, the output uh, values, KB, dose, etc. Mm -hmm. And you also, at the same, with the same exposure, you can get the MA waveform out of it. Oh. So that's the invasive. Most, most of our, our in the industry have that as well. Yes. So what we also offer is a, is a mass two, which is a clamp on. Uh, okay. Of doing it, so then it's actually clamps on to the, uh, the high tension cable uh -huh. by the tube. We connect the wire here to the piranha and put the piranha in the beam. So in the one exposure, you you just get the MA, MS, KV, dose, total filtration, and uh, HVL, of course. Okay. All in one shot, superimposed. Makes so sense. It, yeah, and the most difficult thing when you're using this one is to attach it the right way, this way or this way around. Oh. So that's the most difficult uh, uh, trick or the difficulty right. to overcome with <laughs> the mass two probe. So it's quite, uh, it's quite popular uh, for troubleshooting for biomed, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, and for service staff for the first troubleshooting and the first tests that we uh, that they do. Don't have to dig into the generator; just clamp it on. It's uh, fast, easy, and safe. Got it. And um, last but not least, <laughs> last but not least in the family, uh, we have the cobia, which is actually one of the family of cobias. Mm -hmm. What we're showing here is the cobia flex, which is the, the, the top of the line there. Uh, is, as you see, the, the big difference to the piranha, it's got a display, uh, which shows the KV, the to dose, dose rate, total filtration and HVL and time mm -hmm. all uh, in one. So when you make an exposure, uh, the data will be collected and the values will scroll through in a predetermined oh. number of times. Okay. And the idea you see the display is quite large. Yes. Yeah. And clear. And clear. And the idea is that it should be visible at a distance of 15 feet, which is typically the distance where you're from the console to the couch where you're at. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to have a look and see and be able to, to note down the figures. Okay. That you have. Uh, some of these models also have Bluetooth, are fitted with Bluetooth, so then you wouldn't need the display, it, you get the Bluetooth Got it. The, the information from the software mm -hmm. that we'll look at in a while. Uh, you'll see that on your, on your laptop instead. Okay. So, so this Cobia Flex ha also has a port, the same port as the Piranha has, mm -hmm. uh, to which we can attach all of these, uh, uh, all of these probes. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say you guys recently had a product launch. Do you want to go into a little bit more detail on that? Well, yes, we did. We launched uh, an, an additional probe to our, uh, to our program. This is then uh, related mostly historically for, with the, the output of the, the tube. Mm -hmm. uh, and we launched a scatter probe a while ago, which is uh, designed for leakage measurement and scatter measurements in the x-ray field. Okay. So it has a range of, uh, of uh, 10 keV up to 150 keV, which is then the, the mean energy of the spectrum that we measure. Okay. So it makes it suitable for uh, leakage and, and scatter measurements from MAMO all the way up through to CT and even some higher measurements there. Okay. When it comes to scatter. The interesting thing here is that, as you can see, we've got it marked, the, the active area here is regulation size. Mm -hmm. It's 100 square centimeters. And that's the size called for in uh, regulation by the IEC, uh, IEC uh -huh. as well as FDA. Okay. So it fits that, uh, and you can, so you can make those leakage and scatter measurements with just one exposure. Absolutely. So no, not only the leakage, but also the barrier testing where you need a 10 square centimeter size uh, area uh, to, to cover. 
So it's uh, it's kind of good. We've got it comes with this uh, tri mini tripod, converts to uh, a handle if that need, needs uh, if you need to. But if you have another tripod, is a just a tripod, yeah. normal camera tripod thread that that uh, fits into it. That's amazing. Yeah, this one is uh, wired. Okay. Uh, so it's standard, but it's it's uh, not wired to the Piranha. It's wired directly to your to your laptop to your PC. Oh. So there's a USB cable from here to the, your laptop, and that's what uh, where you collect the data. Okay. From. So we're quite thrilled. We've uh, designed it and yeah. developed it together with um, some of our largest uh, manufacturers in the mm -hmm. industry. And uh, the feedback that we get is interesting, mm -hmm. uh, not only because it's regulation size, but the sensitivity is uh, enormous. So oh, really? It is, yes. Ridiculously sensitive. So that makes it uh, an interesting tool yeah. for, for that segment. Now, my next question, with everything here, is this all that we would need for a complete set of X-ray test tools? Well, this is a this is a big start. I mean, what you see is a, is a quite a big range uh, for uh, for whoever is going to do some testing in, in in this field. But we also then offer holders to uh, position the probes in the right position uh, that are specific for each manufacturer, uh, that, so that we position the probes in uh, a reference height, for instance, or a uh, reference position uh, horizontally, mm -hmm. so that we can actually help so that the engineers will be able to do a calibration the way they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, then we also have some other tools to, to measure the beam uh, and light field alignment, um, and yeah, those kind of things. So we offer quite a, a, a large uh, selection mm -hmm. of tools, and uh, one of the larger in the industry to help biomeds as well as uh, physicists and engineers to perform their job in a better way. Absolutely, and as you know, the more recent advancements in the industry have been driven by software. Mm. My question is, how is RTI addressing software to create um, time savings, traceability, etc.? Well, it's uh, the reason that we have developed since many years back the software package we call Ocean Next. Yes. And uh, we'll have a look at that, and, and uh, I'll explain some more about that. Okay. All right, guys, so we went ahead and moved. Eric and I are standing up here with Ocean Next. Will you go into a little bit of detail and tell me a little more about it? Yeah, sure. It's um, the Ocean software. It's the latest generation of the Ocean software. We call it Ocean Next. Uh, Ocean has been uh, on the market since 2010, and mm -hmm. this is the fourth generation of that software. Okay. Slowly moving to, to uh, more and more functionality in it. Mm -hmm. And what we have here is a software package. Uh, you can say that it's divided up into three major parts. Okay. Where we've got a quick check, which is then uh, the instrument part, part of it, which makes the, the, the Piranha a complete instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, just so you get the values, the data from, uh, from the instrument. Then we've got a, you know, something we call templates that we work with which uh, indicates that it's uh, a, time, a potential time-saving tool for whoever is using it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've got the possibility of, of uh, saving all the da data in a database and uh, using that for traceability and, and for, uh, uh, for uh, quality control mm -hmm. uh, in the long run. So the first one we'll have a look at is the quick check. Okay. Which is a little bit kind of a plug and play functionality that uh, the software will then communicate with whatever instrument we have attached. And depending on the configuration of that instrument, it will ask questions. What do you want to do now? And uh, what we have attached now is a, is a Piranha Multi, which can do radiography, fluoro, mammo, CT, and dental. So we need to uh, decide and, uh, which configuration we'd like to have. So say we want to try radiography. Uh, the software that will then configure itself and pull up uh, a view that gives us as much information as we can. Okay. So like I told you before there, we have from the Piranha the KV, time, dose, dose rate, total filtration, and HVL all in one shot. Okay. And, and these values can then also be presented in a waveform. So we have it over here and uh, where we can see the tube voltage waveform as well as the exposure rate, the dose rate uh, waveform. So that is actually the output from the tube that we're seeing. Um, and which gives us a very good picture, not only the, the numbers of it, yeah. 
but what actually, how do we arrive at that number? That's incredible. Yeah, well, it, and it's good because we can then go back and see how did we arrive at 67 point, uh, 69.77. Mm -hmm. So we can move back and highlight on that one so we can see that waveform again uh, when we're uh, looking at it. So that's the waveform that we can oh. see. So we've got the displays here, we've got the waveform, uh -huh. we've got uh, all that. And if something odd is happening with the waveform, we may want to have a look and zoom in to see what's going on. So we can look at it in a little bit more detail. Yeah. So this is then what we think is the minimum requirement for, uh, for a software or for an instrument to be able to provide mm -hmm. the, the user. So that not only the numbers, but what it, what, what's behind the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, also then to change the, u measure, uh, the unit of measure, simple, we just right click on it and choose something here, maybe MR per second, I think would be a good one, and MR over here. And we will then see that no, no, not only does it change here in the, in the displays, but also in the grid where we changed it to MR and MR per second. As it so all the tests that you run, are these then saved so you can always go back to them? Yes, very good. And that's the first question that we normally get. Uh -huh. This looks good, but can you save the data? And of course, mm -hmm. we can save. As you see, there's a save symbol up there. Okay. Which, uh, with which we can then save this data and then re uh, recover it and uh, reload it mm -hmm. for, for viewing it at a later date. And it can also be shared so we can export the whole measurement file with all the measurements, the waveforms and everything to anybody else who has the Ocean software installed. Wow. So if you have a colleague and you want to share it with somebody, say that, hey, that exposure looked a bit odd. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that before? They can pull it up, uh, the exact measurement, all the data, every indi with all, each individual sample of the, uh, of the measurement. Yeah. To see that, okay, well, I've, saw, I've seen that before. You should do, and you, you can cooperate and get that done. So that gives you more information about uh, the, the measurement mm -hmm. than just simply the value in, in the display. Absolutely. So I think that's, that's kind of interesting. There's also then for, for um, a possibility to include waveforms here if there's something odd happening mm -hmm. in a report, because there's a reporting function built in as well. That allows you then to print a report, uh, generate a report uh, with all the values that we've got, and if you choose, also the waveforms uh, that we are, have, have available. And for traceability, of course, also what instruments did we use, the serial number, so we have that documented uh, for it. And before we close, we can actually then also save it as an Acrobat file. So okay. A PDF file, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to share that information just as an as a image. So, and that's also quite, quite popular and quite, uh, quite interesting. So that's again uh, something that we we uh, we think is is good to work with. If we make a new quick check here, this was the radiography. We can go in and see just for for the for simplicity's sake. How does it look if we select fluoroscopy, for instance? Um, and it's the same screen. Basically, it's the uh -huh. same measurements that we do. All we uh, look at in fluoroscopy is also the frame rate, uh, for instance, um, dose per frame, and number of frames. That's what we have in uh, in in that uh, in, in that view. And of course, now we see that it's it's giving us an arm because there is zero frames, so it's not really uh, giving us uh, the, the math behind it. Is, is since we're right. doing a, a fluoro exposure. So, and if we make another quick check for mammography, uh -huh. we've got that as well, just to give you an idea. So if we make a new uh, quick check, uh, we've grouped the, uh, the, the calibrations that we have, the configurations we have for the uh, piranha according to manufacturer. So it will be easier to find uh, the target filter, the proper target yeah. filter combination. I feel like you've thought of everything. <laughs> well, we've tried, we've got some feedback and we've got yeah. some, uh, and it, we've been, we had it around for quite a while. So it's, we have tried That's to true. absorb the feedback that, mm -hmm. that we got and into something more uh, productive. So for instance, if we go, Hologic is quite popular. If we go there, we can then see uh, Dimension is the one that we're looking at uh, a lot of the time. These are the di different target filter con combinations available for, for the dimensions. Okay. So it, it allows you to, uh, well, we think it may reduce the, the errors sometimes. Right. So that you choose the right 
the proper calibration. And these calibrations have been then, we've arrived at those together with the manufacturers themselves. So we tweaked the, 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 the formulas and the algorithms in the Piranha to arrive at a good value for now, those. I have a question. On mm -hmm. some of the screens, this comment button lights up. Is that so you can leave yourself notes for the future, or what is that used for? Well, it's uh, actually then used to, uh, so if we go back to radiography here, just as, as an example, it's a possibility to add comments to the report. Okay. So, for instance, if, you, if we make just a, make a, an exposure of some kind, and uh, we then look at the, re, the uh, go to a comment, and then we'll just say that, okay, we observed that the casing was cracked. Say that you made Got an observation, it. casing cracked, or was it broken, whatever. So if we just make a, make a note or a comment, whatever it might be, that you can actually add pictures and images also, if you like, because this is a simple word editor. So then anyone who pulls up this report in the future will see your note? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that's then saved in the measurement file itself mm -hmm. uh, and available in that report. So if you look at the preview of the report, we have everything here. No, we didn't select any waveforms, but we do have the comment. Uh, in wow, there. look so, at that. Uh, so that's, again, something that we, we think is, could be valuable when it comes to the traceability. Right. Of it. So instead of trying to remember, we've got it noted down and, and uh, saved for posterity. And also, like we said, we can share the whole file mm -hmm. and the comments will then also be shared uh, along, the, along the line. Fantastic. So. Thank you for presenting this. Is there any other details you want to go into? Any other things our audience should know? Well, this is then the quick check part, like we said. So okay. This is the minimum that we provide our customers with when, they're, when, they're, when they buy a piranha. So we think that it shouldn't be anything less. The next step is some, uh, when we work with templates. Okay. So that's a potential uh, time-saving tool that we include also in the Ocean software. So. Um, in uh, quick check is just the instrument part. You get the data, but what do you do with the data? Mm -hmm. That's the important thing. Now, templates can take care of that. Uh, many of our clients uh, used to use Excel uh -huh. to perform analyses and stuff like that. But the, uh, and in that sense, also work with templates, but Excel templates. Okay. So we've built in that functionality in the Ocean software, so that would help in uh, in the workflow. Mm -hmm. So we, with the test procedures that are performed, they typically follow like a checklist or a set procedure when you want to collect your data and do your analysis. Do this, connect that. And so for that, we can build a template and say that you imagine that you've built uh, an, an, a different templates for different purposes. Right. For KV testing or for linearity testing or reproducibility, or whatever it might be. You build a library of those, mm -hmm. uh, and when you go in to do your testing, you can then select your, your template, and off you go. And this is what, what would happen. If you take those templates and you stick them into a favorite folder, you can then access them like this. They'll be listed. These are your typical uh, popular and the normal ones that you do. Right. So when you get to site, you click on the favorite. You click on, for instance, KVP accuracy for 10K Studio. Uh, we can use, we'll look at the database later, but so it will then pull up the, the template in which you can build instructions for the person doing, doing the job. That, okay, wow. this is the stuff that you need when you're doing your testing. Right. right? Just to help them remind, uh, remind them, okay, this is what you need to do. Then once that's uh, clear, they start picking that out of the case and they're getting ready. They will also have the possibility of instruction of this is how you place it this is how you connect your probes or whatever so that they don't have to remember that mm -hmm. so they they're, they're, and, and also even the old hands will have a chance to to do the same thing every time that means that the data that you connect collect right uh, the chances are that that will correlate to a higher degree mm -hmm. and will then also be more valuable to you Right. So when we're done with that uh, and everything is connected the way it's supposed to be, the, the template is loaded. Mm -hmm. It's a simple um, procedure of just measuring the, the KV. We've got a set value panel here that is then visible from a, a, a distance. So you just put it to the side and operate the console and set your techniques. So when we, uh, we just make sure that we have the set values done, the mass should be larger than 15 
SID larger than 50 centimeters. And we start with a set KV of 50 and then start just making our exposures. So when we do that, then we set the next exposure. Along the line, the, the piranha will collect and measure the KV. Okay. It's 49.44. The software will calculate the difference in percentage between the set value and their measured uh, value right. and determine whether or not it's pass or fail. On, based on the set pass fail criteria that you've defined when you define when you design the template. Oh. So in this case, it's plus minus five percent. Right. And that's uh, the the range we're we're looking at. And along the line, we can also then have um, instructions. So maybe somewhere during the test, you need to add some filters in there. You need mm -hmm. to switch in swivel in a, a copper filter for for this specific test, or add a phantom layer, or I don't know what it could be. You can have those reminders pop up uh, as you go along. Uh, this could be an example that, well, if, if we're doing this on a Siemens, usually there's 81. You can't set it to 80, it's 81 kV. So if we go in, we can go in and change that set value. And uh, so it's all pass. And uh, sometimes it, it also fails. So we can see if we, if we have something else, a measurement which is not 90, uh, if we can get a fail, ah, there we see. It, you've got an automatic fail immediately after the exposure is done, mm -hmm. and that's at 14 at 90 kV. All right, that was bad. How come? Ah, maybe because we had the wrong set value. So then we can go back, redo that exposure, and uh, see we're now here. So we go back and redo with an, with the correct technique mm -hmm. setting, and uh, we have a pass when, once we, we right. the right the proper way. And immediately after the last exposure, there is a, a, a report generated as well. So a report which will give us the possibility to add site information where we performed this test. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, when it was done, when the when data was done, what was the result of it, the summary, pass or fail. And here are then the measurements and uh, all the documentation regarding that plot of how it, the measurements uh, ended up and serial number of the instrument being used mm -hmm. for that. So it, it collects and gets that report done quite, uh, quite fast. Right. And, documents it. and if we go to the database, we'll see that it, we can build a database based on the, 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 the customers we visit or mm -hmm. the, 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 the sites that we are responsible for. Where each of the sites, if we go into RTI Electronics, for instance, here, we have uh, one or more departments. Each department can have one or more rooms. And in the rooms, uh, room oh. one, for instance, I have a rad room there. We can go in and have um, uh, uh, one equipment. And that equipment can be um, a generator and a tube. So if we go click on that, uh, there we go. We've got a generator. And associated with that generator, we have a t an overhead tube. And if we click on that, we'll see that we've entered and built the database with information about the tube, including, including serial number, right. manufacturer, and all that kind of stuff. Same thing with the generator. So when we make a, a, a test, say that we look at a radiography test down there, maybe. Uh, double click it, and then we'll have um, a test that is a multi-test multi template where we, in one go, uh, have HVL, uh, HVL, and we can combine, like we said, you have a library of it, but you can combine mm -hmm. those, so you have several in one go. HVL test, the KVP reproducibility, a KVP accuracy test, a mass linearity test, and again, all those built in with, uh, with all those, and also the possibility to have and analyze questions, like a questionnaire, yes-no questions, so that we can not only connect the, the, the probes and collect data that way, but also during inspection. And these are all questions that you guys have pre-put in there? Well, these is, is our example okay. that we share, and just to get people started. But the Got it. idea is that customers will be able to customize this to their own specific needs. Even better. Do their own tests, mm -hmm. so, then, uh, so they can, then they can uh, get that done. So we've got a, a, a summary, of course, also here, pass, fail. If we look at the report, it's a preview, uh, get a preview of, of the report. 
Again, we've got site information here with the address. Now this is then utilizing the database, right? Right. So we've got site information, a summary. We've got information about the serial number, etc., of all the probes that, or the, the equipment being tested, mm -hmm. and the different tests that we've uh, that we've performed, and also, of course, the, the which, what instruments, the serial number of the instruments right. that we've that we've used as well. There is a possibility also in the display in the report add information about calibration dates of the instrument mm -hmm. so they can have all information in the report in one go and just by collecting that data automatically wow so this gives us the possibility then when we're collecting this much data if we look at the database here is it's relatively small uh, and it's when it comes to it, we have the possibility of of uh, tr doing a trend analysis uh, on this on the database that we have mm -hmm. so if we select and say we want to do um, an accuracy to just look at uh, analyze the, the accuracy um, component of it and maybe a tube voltage accuracy um, to see how does that look what does it look in my database how do, do my does the, the the individuals in my database perform with the accuracy the right the accuracy so if we click on next We'll then be able to limit, if we've got a large database, we can s select parts of it. And uh, like that, we can even have a, a specific manufacturer of generator to analyze that. So if we go to next, they will then mine the database, see that, okay, I've found that analysis here, and then uh, we can finish and uh, we'll get a plot of how that looks. So that wow. means that with, with just by gathering the information in a structured way, right. we have possibility to over uh, to have an overview of what it looks like. Right. So with this, maybe there is a chance of looking at the performance of the generator. Maybe it's degrading. Maybe some there's a manufacturing fault. Maybe there's something else that we might anticipate mm -hmm. and uh, thereby plan downtime for it instead of making emergency repairs. Yeah. We could maybe do something in, a, in a, ahead of time. Yeah, be preventative and stuff. Exactly. So be ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a little bit of, of the way that we think. That not only should we then have the, the possibility of, of uh, gathering data in a structured way, uh, we should also have a traceability. And right. the traceability, in our opinion, should be all the way down to the individual sample. Not just the numbers behind it, uh, that, uh, but what actually generated those numbers. Because mm -hmm. that's the, the, the waveform tells the complete story. The numbers, that's uh, just a truncated version. Of that. <laughs> so that's, that's the way uh, we, we see things. So that's a little bit about the, the, the ocean software. We got, like we said, this is then the, 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 the juicy part of it. Right. Um, with the templates and the database and the analysis. And then, of course, everybody has access to the quick check part of mm -hmm. it. Well, thank you so much for going into detail. I do have a quick question for you. How would you best summarize RTI's overall offering of Ocean? Well, I would say that it's not only do we offer a complete package when it comes to the hardware, so right. where you have competent instruments from, from uh, Piranha, mm -hmm. range of instruments, a range of tools that can be uh, selected and uh, like a pick and mix, mm -hmm. depending on your needs. Uh, over to the Cobia, which is, uh, addresses other areas and a good scatter probe. So the hardware is, of course, important, and uh, we, can, we, we offer that as well, naturally. It has been tested by manufacturers in, in all continents, almost, except Antarctica. Right. Um, so we, we, the, the hardware is, it goes without saying, is really, really good. But mm -hmm. what we're seeing more and more is an, an interest in the data exactly that, uh, that is generated what do you do with it and uh, looking at a hardware or a software that can actually uh, create a better workflow in collecting that data and analyzing the data and doing something with the, the measurement data that you're, you're collecting the numbers so not only collecting the numbers and pushing them but then doing something with it so we would encourage people then to look at the broader picture mm -hmm. of both the hardware and the software Fantastic. I have one last hard question for you. What is the easiest way for someone who's interested to go ahead and reach out to RTI and learn more? Well, it's, I would say, visit our website. Okay. It's uh, rtigroup.com. 
Uh, and from there you have uh, information about all the, the, the hardware mm -hmm. and, and the software and also of course contact information to uh, wherever you need to, whoever you need to reach out to. Fantastic. So that's, that's what I would say. My name's Emily. I'm here with Eric. We're at booth 101 at ICE Expo. If you are here, make sure you stop by and tell my friends hi. Please do. <laughs>